We built our house 12 years ago, and let's just say it's evolved a lot through the years. We are constantly tackling new projects, and I'm always finding some new area of the house that needs a little makeover. And that's what I really love about having a home, is just letting it be a constant canvas for my creativity. But recently, I was looking through some old photos of the house, and let's just say she's come a long way. It's kind of embarrassing, but I'm gonna show you guys some of the photos from like 10 years ago of different areas of the house. And I'm also gonna share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. So get cozy, grab a drink, and let's walk through some of the biggest design mistakes that I've made through the years. The first mistake that we made when building the house was installing too many built-ins. Now, this is something that is kind of counterintuitive because it sounds like it's going to add a ton of organization and make things more streamlined, which I'm all for. But what I didn't think about is how permanent built-ins are. So when you have built-in cabinets and drawers, you can't really rearrange the room. You're kind of locked into exactly how it is. And 10 years later, I wanted to mix things up and change up the way some of our rooms were. So in my home office, we installed these floor-to-ceiling cabinets and drawers um, and a built-in desk that I thought would be super functional and just provide a ton of storage that I would need in such a tiny space. However, it felt a little claustrophobic. It just started making the room feel really closed in and it also blocked a lot of the natural light, which is really important to me when I'm working through the day. So a couple years back, we were making some tweaks to the house and I decided to demo all of those cabinets and drawers it was kind of sad because built-ins are really expensive, but it was a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. And I actually designed a really simple wood desk made out of just one piece of wood that would go all the way under the big window in my office. I found a local carpenter to build it for me. We designed some specific places to store my cords so that everything could still look really clean lined. And I just love the way it opened up the whole room and allows for a lot more flexibility. I can move things around when I'm shooting and it also just leaves open space when I'm working through the day. And I love the way that it lets in all the beautiful natural light in the room. I really love how it turned out. So my next and probably the biggest decision that we made when we were designing the house was not to include any windows in the kitchen. What I would give to be able to go back and I would redesign the entire thing to make room for windows in the kitchen. It just makes such a huge difference and I'm probably in the kitchen more than I am in any other room in the entire house. A couple years ago, we did a renovation. I really looked at what would it take to add windows to the kitchen and it's basically impossible unless we completely gutted the house and reconfigured the entire floor plan. Behind the stove is my primary closet. To the right of the kitchen is our bedroom. To the left is the stairwell. And I even looked at popping some skylights in and unfortunately that's Henry's bedroom upstairs. My fix was even though I couldn't add an entire window, I could make some smaller changes that would enable more natural light to come into the space and also just lighten up the colors of the space, which kind of tricks the eye into thinking that there's more natural light into the room. We demoed one of the shelves up high and we also knocked out the shelving on the right side just to open up more negative space and allow more of the beautiful white plaster to show through instead of having so much heavy dark cabinetry. My favorite change that we made was actually removing the stainless steel hood surround that was above the stove and we replaced it with this beautiful white plaster hood surround that really made a huge difference in the overall look of the kitchen. We also did add lighting. We did strip lighting on each of the shelves and it illuminates what's on each of the shelves because it can get really shadowy. If I had to do it all over again, I probably would have configured the lighting a little bit differently. Our lights are up lights and I actually think that down lights would have been more effective, but another mistake that I have learned from and hopefully I'll be able to correct it sometime in the near future. Yeah. 
All right, so my next mistake was putting a TV over the fireplace in the living room. When I look back at photos, I seriously cannot believe we used to have a TV front and center when you walked into the room. But when we built the house, I really wasn't very experienced with design or doing any kind of renovations. And I kind of had these rules in my head that I thought I needed to stick to, one of which was you had to have a TV in the living room. Really quickly, we learned that it was kind of an eyesore. We didn't really want a TV right when you walked in the door as the centerpiece to the entire space. So a couple years after moving in, we ended up removing the TV from that area. We had created this kind of alcove that we thought would make it look more sleek, but unfortunately the TV wasn't exactly the same size as the alcove, so it just looked kind of sloppy and messy. So we actually had to plaster in the area where the inset alcove was, paint over it so it looked just like the rest of the wall, and then we were able to hang artwork above the fireplace the way that it is now. I actually love using this area to switch out different pieces of art to really mix things up when I'm craving a change in the living room. Right now I have this beautiful tapestry by my friend, the artist Eileen Fitzgerald, and I just love the way that it adds texture and dimension to the space, but still stays in all the neutral colors that I love. You might be wondering, where is the TV in the house? And we actually reconfigured a little room that we initially had carved out as our workout room. And we turned it into this small but really effective little lounge area where we like to watch TV, the kids play video games in there, and it's a great place to just kick back and have the TV somewhere really accessible but also have it somewhat out of sight. My next big mistake that I actually see people make a lot is designing things to be too matchy-matchy. Like I said, when we first built our house, I didn't really have a lot of experience designing spaces and I didn't have a lot of confidence in my own aesthetic. And because of that, I tended to play things really safe. I put things together that matched, I made everything very symmetrical, and the result is just that it felt kind of boring and didn't really feel like it had much soul. So as I've gained confidence and learned my own aesthetic a little bit more, I'm much more inclined to play with asymmetry and add texture and do some things that are a little bit more unexpected. And I think the result is that our house feels a lot more lived in, it feels like it has a lot more soul, and it just reflects my style and my personality a lot more. Another mistake I made was using a lot of like hard-lined contemporary furniture without using texture to soften those lines up. I think that one of the best ways to make a home feel inviting and cozy and welcoming is to add a lot of texture. Use soft materials to really make things feel inviting. And you know, my top priority when I'm designing my house is just for it to feel really cozy and really peaceful. And the way that I do that is by layering on the textures. So even if I have a coffee table or something else that's made of a hard texture, I'll counterbalance that with a really cozy rug or a soft throw. Things that just make it feel a little bit more soft and welcoming and I can still stay in this earthy neutral color palette that I really love, but it doesn't feel boring or sterile when there's tons of layers and warm textures piled on top of each other. It just turns a space into kind of a cozy cocoon, which is really what I'm always going for in any room. All right, I hope you guys loved this little walk down memory lane, revisiting some of my most embarrassing home mistakes, but you know what? It's all part of the journey, and remember, there really are no mistakes. Our homes should be about creativity and just expressing our own personality. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you want more of these design videos? This was our first foray into design on YouTube, and it was really fun to show you guys around. So drop a comment, let me know which tips resonated with you most. Let me know if you disagree with any of them. I'd love to hear what you think. So see you next time. Uh.